join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just make it Ireland. Here we are at Ferry Terminal number one in Dublin Port and this is where you would get your ferry through Irish ferries to travel to Cherbourg in France. You can also sail to Hollyhead from here. You can see the WB Yates label hanging from my mirror as I sit on the queue to board. So you might be thinking that I'm sailing on the WB Yates again, especially since that fine ship is in front of us now. You may also remember that I made a very favourable video praising Irish ferries on their service between Cherbourg and Dublin on the WB Yates a few months back. I'm afraid I'll have to take it all back. Please stay tuned to find out why. So I'm back travelling with them again, but alas, apparently not on the WB Yates, but on this boat that you can just see in the distance, which you may notice has the P&O markings on the side. So why, if I booked Irish ferries, specifically because I enjoyed the crossing on the WB Yates, would I be sailing on a P&O ship? Good question. It appears the two companies are one and the same, and the least said about P&O's recent employment relations scandal, the better. Okay, so it looks like we're finally boarding, but we were originally supposed to sail at 6.30. It's now exactly 9.05, and we're only starting to board. Remember, we should have sailed over two and a half hours ago. Now, I know what you're thinking, that sometimes ferries naturally run late due to weather, and this is the winter after all, but in fact, the weather's great. They're also obliged to contact us within a half an hour of the sail time to inform us of any delay, which I'm sorry to say they missed by a couple of minutes. However, that was the only contact they made with us. The message also said that we'd now be sailing at 8pm, but obviously that was over an hour ago. To add insult to injury, a young guy came round the queue of cars handing out vouchers for a cup of tea or coffee or a soft drink. I mean, they should be providing us with a meal. People have been travelling here from all over Ireland and perhaps haven't eaten since breakfast. Remember, you have to be in the queue two hours before they say you're going to sail. The last thing we need is a three hour delay on top of a two hour wait. Cynically, the next day they invited us up to the cafe for some chips, right at the end of our voyage. After we'd spent a fortune in the restaurant, instead of offering us something on boarding when we really needed it. But of course, the worst kind of delays are the ones where you just don't know what's happening, where the company hasn't even the respect for its customers to communicate with them when things are going wrong. Again, you might be thinking that I'm being a bit hard on Irish ferries, but what if I told you that on my way to Ireland from France just three weeks ago, exactly the same thing happened? You make up your own mind if you think this is a good way to do business. So here we go, finally up onto the ferry. What a tiring day it's been. I still held out some hope, even at this late stage, that there might be some compensation by way of a free meal when we got on board. But no, in fact, on this boat, it costs 25 euros for a meal. You have to buy a voucher if you want to eat, and there's no cheaper option. The other thing is that getting parked in this boat is always a faff. It's not just a case of stopping and putting your handbrake on as it is in the WB8s. Here there's always reversing into certain positions. In fact, on the trip over, we had to drive off again as they took us onto the wrong part of the ship. Worrying. The cabins are very austere and there's no TV like there is on the Yates. It's just substandard. And yet we paid around 200 euros for this cabin. In one direction, that's nearly 400 for the return trip. You'd get a great hotel room for that. The whole return trip, which was disastrous in both directions, cost 870 euros. A scandal. Tired and hungry, we head to the restaurant. But first, we must negotiate these stairs. Check out the gradient. Okay, so this kid is just about managing, but he could just as easily fall on his head. I reckon I'm only years away from not being able to climb these at all. And here's the restaurant. More of a canteen with its formica tables. And we started the sale. Finally, three hours late. There's a 
small bar, not like the various lounge areas that you have in the WB8. And then we see the reception, with no one man on it. I wouldn't want to face customers if I were them either. Breakfast the next morning was 20 euros per person, which is more expensive than you'd pay in a very good hotel. There was plenty of it, but it was nothing special. Cheap orange juice in a plastic cup, and this unedible pan au chocolate. Probably the worst I've tasted. Of course, the romance of breakfasting with a view of the sea would be a bonus. Until you see the state of the windows through which you must enjoy this natural spectacle. So out on deck now, and I'm hoping their lifeboats are in better shape than their windows. And there's the P&O logo on the side of the ship. Irish ferries must be so proud. All bad things must come to an end, and so we finally, and thankfully, roll off this excuse for a passenger ferry and head on our onward journey into France. It's always a shame to be negative in these films, but frankly I have nothing good to say about this crossing. It appears to be a company that values neither its staff nor its customers. Regardless, please give the film a like if it's been informative, and please think about subscribing to the channel. That really helps Naked Ireland create more entertaining and informative content for the future. And alas, the very odd bad review like this. And I'll see you all in the next Naked Ireland.